I think one of the biggest misconceptions with wildlife art or any really difficult subject is that it's either traced or created with some sort of aid, such as a grid. And I think that couldn't be further from the truth. And so in this video, I'm going to walk you through uh, freehanding a pair of wolves in this new landscape painting that I've been working on. And just kind of talk about my process and, and how I got here. So I'm using oil paints for this and I left this portion of the painting uh, blank with just the burnt sienna wash in the background so that I could leave myself enough room to work on these wolves. As I'm beginning to sketch these wolves, I'm using just a little bit of orange and red combined with a small amount of blue to create just this warm reddish tone. And sketching this out by thinning the paint down with some paint thinner and lightly dusting it on as I go. And you'll also notice that I'm using this makeup sponge to wipe away anything that I don't like so that I can redraw it as I go. And by using this method, I'm able to continuously work this until I'm happy with it rather than being stuck with something. So that's why I like to sketch things out, especially wildlife art, with thinner and a makeup sponge because it takes a long time to dry, it's easily painted over, and I can work it as long as I want to until I'm satisfied. And then once I'm finished, you'll see me move on to the paint. So, like many, when I begin my art journey, and especially when I got more interested in wildlife art, uh, I obviously didn't have much luck with proportions, trying to make things look realistic or accurate. It's a very difficult subject to, to try and not only draw, but uh, more so to paint. And so I did use aids such as transfer or tracing, and I used a lot of grid method, especially uh, in my teen years and even into my early 20s, trying to figure out how on earth I can uh, draw this accurately uh, while not tracing. Because tracing, to me, never really allowed me to explore what I really wanted to creatively and artistically. And so I always, in my intentions, strived to freehand as, as much as possible, but uh, that was, of course, easier said than done. However, at, at some point, I knew I wanted to break free from the use of any aid whatsoever. I want, and I've always wanted my art to speak freely from myself and not be bound by, by anything that could constrict that. And it was frustrating because so many educators and artists had always told me that Artists had been using aids such as grids or transfers or tracing for, for centuries and that this was just the way it was and that nobody can really accurately depict something totally by freehand. And I just didn't believe that this was true. I've always been somebody that had gone against the grain and so uh, that's what I begin to, to strive for. I think the hardest part of that is the criticism that I received once I really begin to challenge myself and break free of, of tools such as using a grid. And this, this is even applied to my landscape work as well. Once I really begin to paint what I see and use the brush and pencil in my hand and nothing more, I noticed a, a lot of things really suffered within my art. Uh, perhaps the quality, the proportions, the amount of, of realism I could convey through my brushwork, my pencil marks, all of this was, was damaged through my desire of wanting to do it completely on my own. And I, I've, and still to this day, received a lot of criticism for how my art looks or that 
it seems to have taken a step backwards. And I think I noticed this as well, because as I begin to improve myself over time and my artwork, uh, it was starting to become recognized and uh, I was getting a lot of praise for the artwork that I had been doing. However, when I really took this new challenge to heart and set out to figure out a way to do this purely freehand, even I noticed that the quality of my work took a hit. But I always knew what was important to me, and I knew that if I stuck with it, that at some point in time, it would help propel myself beyond what I thought was potentially possible for myself. Fast forward five or six years down the road to present day, and I can really see the improvement in how I work on something such as these wolves. What used to be a constant struggle in trying to figure out how to approach it and how to go about it has now begun begin to feel more automatic. And that's not something that I feel like I can explain real well. There's no secret in how I do something like what you're seeing right now. To me, I think looking back, it's definitely been one of those things where practice makes perfect, perhaps. Just just time in front of the easel and challenging yourself in a certain way, it, it produces what you're what you're after. At some point in time, what you seek is what you'll achieve so long as you are doing the things that push you in that direction. So if you are always using something like tracing paper or a grid or even a ruler, some sort of aid, uh, I don't believe you'll ever truly achieve the ability of, of being able to freehand your subject because it, it won't challenge you in a way that forces you to better yourself over time. And that's probably the biggest lesson I've learned in this whole process. And it really gets me to think about other aspects of my work and my paintings and how I can put pressure on myself to put me in those uncomfortable situations, those uncomfortable feelings while I'm working, which in turn provide what I'm after over time. And by no means do I feel like I've arrived or that I've achieved perfection in any way. It's a constant learning process. I feel like I have a long ways to go to accomplish and to exhibit what what I want through my work. But even today, the most difficult part is ignoring the feedback, or I should say perhaps the feedback I don't want to hear because I am the only one who truly understands the path that I'm attempting to take with my artwork and feedback and criticism although is very good oftentimes does not have the context for what you're ultimately after and because of that lack of context we oftentimes, as artists, get comments that are hard to take, but at the same time don't really matter. But the struggle is that it's it's hard to understand as the artist that it doesn't really matter because they don't have the context for why I'm doing what I'm doing. At any rate, all of these things is what has brought me to where I am today. I'm finally feeling comfortable in my ability to freehand and to build my landscapes from the ground up only through what I feel and the brush in my hand. And I'm here to tell you that there is no secret in learning how to freehand any subject. It's just time and persistence over many years. And at some point, 
you realize you can do something that you couldn't do months or years ago. The most important aspect to freehanding something like this pair of wolves is your initial sketch. And it's important to sketch in a way that gives you the ability to correct, make mistakes, and use your eyesight to criticize what you're laying down. And then something or some ability, as I said, to, to back up a race and then attempt a second time or a third time or a fourth or fifth time like I do almost every time I attempt something like this. I think the hardest thing to catch up to your ability to draw or paint is your perception of what's good or not good. It took me so many years to develop the ability to see what I'm drawing or what I'm painting for what it is and recognize the mistakes I'm making. A lot of times in the past I would draw or paint something and not possess the ability to identify the things that didn't look right. And so I think the biggest thing that I've overcome in the last four or five years has been uh, my, my lack of ability to, to see what's wrong in my paintings. And I think that's been the key to my growth in, in freehanding a subject. I hope you've enjoyed this explanation of my process. These wolves are now looking great and I'm ready to tie them in to the rest of this large landscape, which I'll be sharing with you real soon here. So thank you again for watching. Please check out my memberships down below the video where I share my reference photos, longer extended videos, tutorials as well. And until next time, keep painting, enjoy the process. We'll see you then.